Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? Kelly is a volunteer at SIDE, a nonprofit in Kansas City, Kansas, that provides services to members of the community with mental illness. We're introduce ourselves. Okay, this is the dual recovery um, group on the anti stigma campaign. I have. She helps write grants, mentors other members, and is the vice president of the board of directors. You write your positive affirmations on them. Kelly is not a doctor or a social worker, but she brings a special understanding to her work. Kelly has a mental illness. Because I know I see my nurse. She and every other side member are on their own journey of recovery. When I was out there, um, just in my in my general life, it was half Kelly, half monster. That's what I saw in the mirror. I was angry. Um, I was lonely, I was tired of just being out there. Kelly had been in and out of treatment since childhood, but didn't find wellness until she came to side. When I came to side, I was accepted. For me, it wasn't what I could give, it wasn't what I could take. It was who I was, because we respect each other and we give each other peer support. And that peer support was something that I didn't understand. SIDE is part of a growing movement that is changing the face of mental health services across the country. As a consumer-operated service, SIDE is a place where peers are helping each other move past their mental illness. They are building new lives, working side by side. It's run by consumers. It's shared leadership. We basically are in the driver's seat. SIDE is a safe environment with no stigma. We challenge that learned helplessness. We don't allow that to happen. It empowers people to see themselves beyond their mental illness. You have a real family here. Different people that are in higher positions, they show just tremendous love. This is just a very uh, good setting for consumers to come and be involved and find out that they're really able to do a lot more with their lives. SIDE stands for Socialization, Interdependence, Development, and Empowerment. SIDE was founded by consumers to help themselves and their peers rebuild their lives and support each other in their recovery process. It runs a drop-in center in the downtown area, but it offers much more than just a place to be. We have many programs like uh, leadership programs, we have a lot of art programs, we have a lot of um, men's groups, women's groups, um, social groups, um, anything that has to do with education. We value education highly and we also value community service, so we are out in the community a lot. Consumer operated services can include drop-in centers, housing and employment assistance, crisis support, education, transportation, and many other kinds of services and supports. As important as the kinds of services offered is the fact that the people offering the services are peers. We have been through hospitalizations. We know from first-hand experience what it's like to be hospitalized. We know what it means to have a nervous breakdown, to be in psychosis, to be in wellness. And every person here is a member of this community, and we all experience firsthand what it's like to have a mental illness. Many consumers that we serve have lost their families, um, their friends, and really have no one else to rely upon. So SIDE really fills that role for consumers, and I think ultimately that social support network, the community integration piece outside and apart from the mental health center is critical to a person's recovery. The sense of partnership between SIDE and the Wyandotte Center is not an isolated case. A growing body of research and experiential evidence supports the work of consumer-operated services. Managed care companies are recognizing that the promotion of wellness through consumer-operated services can prevent expensive hospitalizations and reduce the need for acute care services. The multi-site study findings establish consumer-operated services as an evidence-based practice. In other words, if you deliver the services the way they're intended, you will get the outcomes. And in this case, that means you will have people that have greater well-being. 
over time. They're cost-effective, they're creative, they're life-affirming, they fill in gaps. We know that the mental health system struggles with people who get lost in the gaps. So as a policymaker who is responsible to the citizens where I live, it's important that I do what I can to fill in those gaps. And I believe that consumer-run organizations do that. I mean, this is really recognizing the people that you serve as having a dynamic and central role in their own care. And that's a shift for people. I think there is some reluctance. I think there is some hesitation. I think there is, frankly, uh, an educational process. But I have found that over time, even those individuals who had resistance, once they see a consumer-operated service at work, once they talk with individuals who have benefited from consumer-operated services, they really do, I think, embrace it and become advocates for it. Self-help and peers helping peers are fundamental elements of the recovery movement in mental health. They represent a fundamental change in the way we think about people with mental illness. The we're at that tipping point where we have enough evidence around their success and we just want to reach over that tipping point and get it into every system. People like Kelly and organizations like SIDE are living proof that consumer-operated services can make a difference. <laughs>